Maharaj put his hand on my head and he said, Yes, I bless you. And then when I walked out, I met Shirobhati Vidyan Bhaji Goswami Maharaj. So, we understand that Krishna, he manifests as Sri Guru. The only way Krishna is passed from one person to the other is through, through Sri Guru. Because Krishna is living in their heart. Krishna, uh, Prabhupada would say, uh, one day Krishna Jara Guru. That Krishna is the Guru. And he is manifesting in so many ways. So Shilabharsa Maharaj, he, uh, I wanted to because I was feeling a lot of uh, pain that I had no Vaishnava to take shelter of of the Gurudeva. And so I saw Shilabharsa Maharaj, or he saw me, and I was thinking how am I going to spend time with him? Because at that time there were no Western devotees with Maharaj and he only had like two or three other devotees with him. So I was thinking how will I travel with them, how will I stay with them, and it seemed impossible. So I decided to pray. <laughs> so I started to pray to Mahaprabhu. I said, Mahaprabhu, I need another Indian devotee who can come and who speaks English and who can help me get in with uh, Shilabharti Maharaj's little group because there was one other sannyasi um, Bhakti Tinkara Damodar Maharaj and Naratam Guru and that was like a little tight team and uh, they were just going with Maharaj so I thought oh, this is not going to be possible to go with them so I started praying and not by the power of my prayer but by the mercy of uh, Shilabharti Vidyan Bharti Maharaj the same day, there was one devotee, his name is Bhaktasur, and um, he's Indian, but he's like a Western devotee, and he's hilarious. He's always cracking jokes. So he started coming, and I said, oh, let's talk to the devotees, and he started making all the jokes with Maharaja Sevaks. And very soon, Maharaja Sevaks said, oh, we like you too so much that you should come with us. <laughs> So I said, yes. We <laughs> 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 should have a bill that made the plan work. So I went with Maharaj and we started traveling with Maharaj. And uh, so the first time I was with Maharaj, I, I was feeling a bit hesitant. And so there was no one in his room. And at that time, uh, it was like um, only Maharaj could be in his room when he was chanting Harinam. So then I saw Maharaj, this was in Jalanga, and I saw Maharaj sitting in the room. So in my heart there was this clear message, go, run now, go into Maharaj's room and sit at his feet and just chant. But I knew it was really risky because if I did that then I might be thrown out and you know, asked not to come back or something. So I ran in and I just sat in Maharaj's feet. And Maharaj looked at me, and I looked at Maharaj, and then he just, he started chanting uh, Harinam. And I started chanting Harinam with Maharaj. And then he started talking to me, and he started to explain uh, where I was from, what, what I'm doing. And he got into a conversation, and it was at that point I realized that the direction that sometimes we're given in our heart, we don't listen to it. Sometimes it's like we have a clear inspiration, but we may hesitate. And what I learned a lot of times with Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj was to trust that. To trust that when Krishna is speaking, or Gurudev is speaking in some way through your heart, to um, its clear message, don't hesitate. So many times, to begin with, I was hesitating, as in, oh, I could hear this message, but I was afraid that maybe I'll make a mistake, I'm new, I don't know the whole scenario. But every time I did that, I saw that Maharaj was pleased. He was wanting me to come, wanting me to stay with him. And later on, it really became very confirmed for me when we were in Calcutta some years later. We were sitting in Maharaj's room. We were in Sri Chaitanya Gaudiya 
And so there's like 50, 60 brahmacharis in this mud. And at times it became quite, um, not tense, but it, 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 it was a lot of devotees at the same time. And so sometimes I would just look for a space to be by myself. So that place was really only with Maharaj. So I'd go into his rooms and spend time with him. So one time I was there and um, there was some something going on in the mud that I was trying to figure out how to make it so there wouldn't be more trouble. Uh, in terms of, because I was the only Westerner in that mud, Sri Chaitanya Gauri mud, and that mud specifically was quite um, strict. So you weren't allowed into certain rooms and you couldn't go into the kitchen. And so there was some tension. And I was, so I thought, okay, let me go to Maharaj's room and figure out what to do. So I went to Maharaj's room and I sat there next to him. And eventually I came to the conclusion, okay, this is what I should do. And as soon as I thought that, Maharaj put his newspaper down and said, very good. <laughs> so I was like, oh, uh, Maharaj, you're listening. And then, um, a few days later, another situation came up. And I was in Maharaj's room. And again, I thought within my heart, okay, what should I do here? And then I came to the conclusion, and Maharaj again put his newspaper in and said, yes, very good. But then I was becoming more and more clear that Maharaj knew everything that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, there was this one person who was thinking to leave him up. And Maharaj, when I was massaging Maharaj one time, he, he said to me, oh, how is this person? And I said, oh, Maharaj, I don't know that person. And he said, well, don't you care? And I was thinking, what is Maharaj saying? What is the message he's trying to give me? And then as soon as I walked out of the room, that person was walking down the stairs, crying, 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 and they were about to leave the mud. And I said, oh, I knew this person. And Maharaj was mentioning this. And she said, yes, I'm that person. I was about to leave. But I didn't even know that Srila Bharati Maharaj knew about me. I didn't even know that he knew my name. So, why I'm telling these is because with, with all the Vaishnavas, but certainly with my experience with Srila Bharati Maharaj, is that he knew about each one of us, what each one of us was, was doing, what we were going through, and um, his support. His support for all of his disciples, for all of his friends, and whenever any Vaishnava would come that he hadn't seen for years, he would stop the whole class and greet them. And then there was like a two, three minute in this middle on this huge panda sometimes of Maharaj stopping it and talking to the devotee that he hadn't seen for some time. And I had never obviously met Srila Bhakti Daita Madhav Maharaj, but by serving Srila Bhakti Maharaj, I felt very deeply that I had met him. Because Maharaj was uh, always talking about him, and his mood was always about serving the devotees. So, um, when we would go every day for Maharaj, in fact, when I, one of the first times I was there, Maharaj became sick. So, um, one of the devotees was cooking, and I was the only person in the room with Maharaj for like one week. Maharaj was sick, so no one could go in the room, no one could go out. Or, yeah, it was just me and Maharaj in the room. And it was quite unusual because being all that time, sort of not going anywhere, just staying in the room almost like for one week, I felt like me and Maharaj were communicating in a different way. It didn't need language anymore that there was just that when Maharaj needed something, he would look at me, and after some time I understood that okay, this is what he needed. And so, as you know, sometimes in India, there is not so much communication sometimes, they're just looking at you and wanting you to do something. So I found that very, it was like a ballet, it was like a, you know, a dance, that Maharaj would look, Okay, and look at me, and then somehow or other he would inspire within your heart what he wanted. 
and then you would act. And just being with Maharaj more and more, it felt like that, that there was less and less need for words and more and more um, intuition or inspiration. And that gave me a tremendous amount of um, trust in myself, is that, yes, we can hear the Vaishnava, and that they are speaking to us throughout the day in, in, in our life. And when I hear of Srila Prabhupada, when he's talking about, I was never alone in New York, in the Chaitanya Chaitanya, he talks about, I never felt alone. And that is, I think, for me, one of the greatest gifts that the Vaishnava gives, is that you never feel alone. In my life before, I had felt lonely at times. There was this just feeling sometimes of being alone. And what was almost surprising for me was that one day, well, it was almost like one day, that, that feeling got went. That I was no longer alone, that the Vaishnava was in my heart with me, and that there was no going back. So this is the... Um, Maharaj gave many gifts to me. Um, I think he gave so much love to me, affection, that um, even one time I did something wrong in a bathroom, I turned off one tap, and Maharaj had to fill up the um, bucket that was on the floor with a little small hand bucket and he was filling it up because I had turned one of the taps off so the water wasn't flowing so Marsh thought there was a water shortage so he was doing it from the sink and so one devotee he, he became like oh no Marsh is doing this and he, he started to get like upset with me and then Marsh went back to his room and then he came into the room where I was and he looked at me and I was, I was praying and said, Marge, don't say anything to me now. Because if you say anything to me now, it's like my, I was a bit hurt by the whole situation. I said, if you say anything to me now, I don't know if I can say anything back to you. So then Maharaj went to his room and he said, my name before the Pasu was uh, Ananta. So Maharaj said to me, Ananta, Krishna loves you so much. <laughs> So, and then I, then I said to Maharaj, I said, oh, Maharaj, I'm so happy I'm here with you. I was feeling a bit delicate at this time. <laughs> and Maharaj was, what is it? He, he said, I said, oh, Maharaj, I'm so happy to be here with you at this time. And then Maharaj says to me, I'm also so happy that you are here. Aww. So it, it was that he was melting the hearts of the devotees in so many different ways. And I felt that... Um, his way was very unique because he wasn't a very demonstrative kind of, um, like Gurudev in one sense, I should have liked to even in the song, right? he, he was more reserved. Yet, in his affection, it was very, very um, deep in, in that he knew what was going on for each one of us and knew what each one needed. And at times, he would, um, when I was giving him massages, it was quite uh, wonderful because Maharaj would just get lost in his own absorption. And I was massaging him and he would be waving his arms and just <laughs> completely absorbed. And so he allowed me, I felt, to um, spend some special time for me with him. Um, to As when a Vaishnava shares their heart with you, I felt like his grandson, actually. And, and so I would ask Maharaj many, many questions about his life. And what I understood before that, Maharaj never really would talk about his life. But he was um, explaining to me how he was a very good swimmer. And when he was a young boy, there was a big lake in front of his house. And he would always go swimming in that lake. And then, then, because I was also a little adventuresome, so I would tell Maharaj when we were in Calcutta that, oh, Maharaj, I swam across this lake. And then he, and then he would sit down and tell me, listen, I'll tell you about that lake. That when we were young brahmacharis, we were living in Rasvi Hari, the um, road, and there was no water in the temple. So we would take our bath and we would go swimming in that lake. And so all the brahmacharis would swim in that lake for their bath, 
and I come back to the mud. So whatever I had done, Maharaj had some story <laughs> about that place that I had been to. So then one day I told him, oh Maharaj, I swam um, in the Ganga. I want to swim across the Ganga. Maharaj said, I swam across the Ganga. <laughs> and then the devotee next to me, he said, yeah, but Maharaj didn't swim at just for sense gratification. And, and, I, and, and Maharaj will never hear these things. He said, no, I swam across because there wasn't enough vegetables in the mud. We had a flood. So I swam across the Ganga, got some vegetables, and brought those vegetables back with me across the Ganga. So, and that, that's... Many times we were in the Himalaya. Yeah. <laughs> so many times when I would do little things, we were in Himachal Pradesh in the mountains, and I would go out for a walk. And when I came back, Maharaj would ask me, "What did you see?" He said, "Did you see an elephant?" <laughs> I said, "No." Did you see any tigers? I don't know, Maharaj. I saw a, a, a goat. I saw a lamb, I saw a crow. And then, then throughout the day, Maharaj would say to the different devotees, oh, he saw a crow, he saw a lamb, he saw this, and he would like repeat all the things that I had said to these sannyasis. That, you know, they're like, what is Maharaj talking about? <laughs> and then the next morning he said to me, I am an old man and I can't move from my bed. All I can see is an old cow out my window. <laughs> so he would have this kind of like run, running commentary of, I would tell him what was going on, and he would tell me what was going on. And then in that one festival in, um, in Himachal Pradesh, Maharaj was always watching everything. So when he came back, I could tell that he wanted to say something to me. Because he'd be looking at me like this. Like eager to tell me something that had happened. So when everybody went out, he would wait for everybody to go out, and he would say, come here. <laughs> so, so he said, did you notice anything? I was like, oh gosh. Because Maharaj, you know, he, he notices everything. It's like an eagle watching everything. You know, so I was trying to think. So then I couldn't think. I said, Maharaj, I don't know anything. I would just go back to the place that Maharaj, I don't know anything. <laughs> Oh, what happened? He said, did you see that box that was in front of the deity? And there was a big Abhishek going on. They had just installed his deity. And Maharaj was the main guest of honor. And he was doing the Abhishek. And everybody was honoring Maharaj. And, but Maharaj was just focusing on the box. While <laughs> he was doing the Abhishek. But I could see that he was like focusing on this box. And he said, did you notice anything about this box? And he said, no, Maharaj. And then he said, what was written on the box? And then he said, oh, um, donation. He said, yes. How can we donate anything to Krishna? Because Krishna has given everything. So how could they write donations on the box? <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this whole festival is going on. Maharaj is thinking about how can we donate anything to Krishna? How can they write donations on the box? And that was my, she was always thinking and considering all these little points about what was happening and always um, discussing it, wanting to know. And so, Maharaj, he was always, um, as I said, thinking about the devotees. One time I was on the train and I got lost because the train got diverted. They didn't tell me it was supposed to be going to Calcutta, but it got diverted to a whole different route. And then uh, uh, I texted the devotees, I'm going to be late because I've got derailed somewhere. So what happened actually, there was this one devotee, not devotee, one Bengali man. No, no, he wasn't Bengali, he's from Nepal. So this one Nepalese man, he woke me up and said, hey, our train is going in a different direction. You have to get off here. And you have to take this train and go back to Calcutta in this way. So I did that. 
go back to the mud, and Maharaj was there, and he said, what happened? I said, oh Maharaj, the, the, the train got, went off in a different route, but someone helped me. And the Maharaj said, yes, God helped you. God sent you a man. And I said, yes, God sent me a man. And he said, God sent you a Nepalese man. <laughs> And then for the next two or three days, Maharaj was telling me, yes, God has sent you a Nepalese man. <laughs> and I could understand that Maharaj had sent that man, but he was saying, yes, God has sent you a man. So many times, Maharaj helped me to see that Sri Guru is always directed and watching out for his... Um, ones who are close to him. And what I admire the most about Maharaj was that his um, complete de dedication, how he was so dedicated to his Gurudev, that he, uh, I, I, I saw some, uh, a Vaishnav who had, had given his life for his Gurudev, and that was so inspiring that to see someone who had um, lived the sick Maharaj lived in the muck for 60 years. It's incredible. We live in the muck sometimes 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, and we feel tension. And you may know that... A few weeks. A few weeks. <laughs> yes. But what is beautiful about the Vaishnavas is that they, they, they don't expect anything for themselves. This is a quality I saw in Maharaj that, that what I would like astound me is that he, he didn't want anything for himself, and he only wanted to serve. Um, when you've been in a month for some time, you start to realize I want something for myself, and if I'm not feeling well, I'm going to go and buy something, or I'm going to make some arrangement for myself. But Maharaj, never once in his life did he ever make any arrangement for himself. And uh, one time he was sick, and uh, the, the devotees said, oh, we're going to get some money, we're going to write a letter. So they wrote a letter to their relatives to get some money, to buy some boga, so they could cook some special prasad for them, because they were all sick. And they'd asked the devotees, give me some special prasad, but they didn't get it. And eventually, some money came, and they asked Shri Bharati Maharaj, oh, we can cook something for you. And then, uh, what was Maharaj's reply? He says, I've never signed any contract that the mutt owes me anything. I've only come here to serve. I don't expect anything from them. So that kind of mood really only comes when you're completely surrendered. When your heart is just completely without anything about myself. And it's only completely dependent. And so, just to summarize, when you read that book, My Beloved Masters, that's what Maharaj says in the introduction of that book. He says, how do we harmonize all these Vaishnavas? He says, the only way we can harmonize them, he says, just like if you have a pot, and you have the turmeric and the other, and the, you know, the jira, and all the different spices, but you don't have the salt. The main ingredient is missing. So it doesn't matter what other ingredients you have, if the main ingredient is missing, it won't taste good. And in the same way with the kirtaniya. If the kirtaniya is expert at playing murdanga and playing cartels, but there's no bhav in the kirtaniya, then it feels empty. So Maharaj is saying in the same way, how do we reconcile all the differences of the Vaishnavas is because they've surrendered. That is what's common throughout all of them. They've surrendered their life. And certainly with Maharaj, that was a great inspiration to see that there was no holding back. There was, there was just fully serving. And uh, one time, the devotee asked for the Lord of Inda Maharaj, Maharaj, how can I develop love for Guru? And he said, oh, you follow his instructions. And he said, well, that's sometimes not so easy. And then Shri Lord Maharaj said, he says that we have to pray. We have to pray that our attachments, that our for our family and our relatives and for whatever, we have to pray that that attachment comes to the lotus feet of Gurudev. 
that we take all that attachment that we have now in this world, that we feel with each other, our, our friends and families, or whatever it may be, that attachment, we take it, and we pray to Nityananda Prabhu that we can put that at Gurudev's feet. And so that is what uh, Shri Bhakti Gita Narayana Goswami has told us. He said, when I came to the Mutt, I told my Gurudev that all my affection for my family, for everyone else, I put it at your feet. So the so Shri Bhakti Maharaj, in the Vaishnavas, they take that from us. Isn't it? Gurudev said, Oh Gurudev, I want to give you my heart. And what did Gurudev say? It's too late, I've already stolen it. It's <laughs> not <laughs> So the Vaishnavas, they, they, they steal our hearts and put it in their pocket and then our attachment goes towards them. And then whatever situation, whatever problems we, we find in our life, Gurudev gets us through. How does he get us through? By remembering them. Remembering how our affection for them, our connection to them. So, interestingly enough, Mahaprabhu only met his Guru two times. One in Gaya and one in Mayapur. So sometimes we hear that, oh, I didn't spend so much time in my Gurudev. But this verse, Tadvari Pari Prashnina Pari Prashnina Sevaya Upadekshanti Tevanam Gyaninas. Tadvadarshana Gyaninas is a plural. Just, not just Gyani, one person. Gyaninas. Many, many teachers. And so Guru comes to us through many teachers and we will feel that same connection with the Vaishnavas. And we always know that there is Vaishnavas present in this earth that we will meet and that will continue that line. Last thing I just remember, Shiva Govindam Maharaj said that Yoga Maya, she is arranging everything. So if we meet Gurudev now, uh, we will meet him again. And Yoga Maya is making all the arrangements, so we meet Gurudev again in a different way, and we will know that this is Gurudev. So that connection is our.